Um, I really, really glad for the night again for another important edition of Low Talk to the Minister. As promised before, um, today I'll be joined by my colleague and brother, uh, Honorable Timothy Kaba, who will join me for Low Get This Conversation. Yeah, so. so, I want to welcome you all. I want to welcome you all to the program and my colleague will join me in the next few minutes. But I want to assure you that it's going to be a very exciting conversation. Timothy, they come, they come on a job with wealth of experience, you know, spanning several continents, several countries. Um, on the appointment, Naimi led the Petroleum Directorate. You know, so at the journey today for all discuss this. Um, the Ministry of um, Mines and Mineral Resources, Tina where the government may commit in the new direction manifesto. Um Tina within uh, the medium term national development plan, the government may promise for do, and also Tina within the manifesto where His Excellency uh, President Julius Madam you been promised for do. So now very excited even in this morning, this evening. Uh, I want to use this opportunity for welcome on all. Who to join with from various parts of the country and from all over the world. Um, so um, we all are aware I say salon endowed with plenty, plenty, plenty minerals. So the one that would on my hold on the mine since the 1930s, in the diamond, um, later would they do gold, would they do bauxite, would they do iron ore? Now they want and they would on the mine. But I understand so blessed with much more mineral resources than that. My colleague, um, na, a mineral, mineralogist, um, a mining engineer, and more. So if we can take you through some events in the day. Um, we look at in the new direction manifesto, we look at the, the state of mining at the time, then we can compare to what it looks like today in terms of beneficiation for mining communities. In terms of government revenue, our government benefits, in terms of job creation, in terms of contribution to GDP, in terms of um, transparency uh, and compliance with the extractive industries, transparency international. We want to talk about oil and gas and all in the alpha model, always one for nobody. So, my colleague will join me and it will be a roller coaster um, engagement tonight. So, we'll have all tight. In the meantime, as usual, I want to tell you all plenty thank you. We are always the keep this time with we. Again, I also want to tell you that plenty thank you. I encourage you to share the link that the groups that want to the various forum there, so that you know we get a truly engaging, truly civilized Sierra Union dialogue and conversation on how we make sure say we mineral resources then benefit we, we mineral resources then. Not on a cause, but a blessing to this country. So, we'll allow a whole tight um, as I will usher in my colleague pretty soon. In the meantime, do you allow the share? Allow the share. Let the conversation heat up. So, okay, while, while, while we wait for that, let us just uh, talk about a few briefs here and there. Today, today at the Ministry of Information and Communications, uh, we've been getting a major press conference um, for discuss the ministry exclusively. Um, today, we won't forget an overview four years on. Um, let's look at the sector generally, um, as we plan particularly for host a digital transformation conference um, for showcase within the achievements we we'll don't do under President Bill in, in, in administration for and a half years on in terms of digital development, in terms of digital transformation, within the progress we we'll don't make, within the plans that we'll get for the future for make sure so we'll able to actualize the vision for build a truly digital economy, for ensure say 
salon it will improve in digital optic and i tell you there are a lot of things that will achieve I've, I've been talking previously say in 2017 at the end of 2017 we can get 3, 370,000 sarlinians as of june this year last year we can get 2.67 million sarlinians that's a huge achievement um now one day not to by chance it happen not to by accident it happened as a result of the investment the government now doing this sector as a result of the regulatory framework that all don't put in place, as a result of the policy reforms that all don't put in place, as a result of the very, very sincere commitment of His Excellency the President for Make Sierra Leone a truly digital economy. So today we'll meet with all the players like, at, the, at the ICT and um, telecommunications ecosystem, um, both private and public sector players there, who don't today begin to talk about um, this is a um, um, transformation conference. You know, where young people themselves will come showcase their talents there, will get hackathons there, will get competitions there. Now, an opportunity for let everybody can interact and make viable contributions there to moving with, with, with digital development process forward. I think so that one is very important. The lady where they lead the cyber security efforts, Madam Yoma, also been there for talk about um, um, the strides that we would all make. Of course, uh, please for not say we don't we don't take delivery of um, the equipment and today for for put in place a national SAT we go able to uh, protect cyber crimes there in the salon and do boku all that in there for make with cyber space safe for people then where they use digital space because now a responsibility on the government for make sure say you keep it citizens safe whether in cyber space whether in real life whether everywhere. And this government they treat their responsibilities and they seriously. Their equipment there, the ECOWAS buy on for we with funding from the European Union. Um a very limited opportunity. We'll be able to make a very strong case and salon being preferred to the other countries and wouldn't say we want. You know, um there are concerns why not salon. But we're able to make a very compelling case say salon will be the most fitting and suitable candidate for that we host the national SAT. So by the special grace of God. The mayor will. As at the talk, we they um, will get in the country United Nations um, Office for Drugs and Crime. Um, the name in the country UNODC um, for country no prosecutors there um, for cyber crime management for cyber crime detection and other things. Yeah. So today is a very very big day for the country and a very excited say. Um, Next week, the training they begin. Today, they can't pay a call or me yesterday. Today, they continue to the call for, for clearly understand um, um, the reality of the cyber security situation at the country. Call it a scoping study so that beyond capacity building, they also go ahead and put additional equipment and beyond what the ECOWAS don't do. So, we are moving. And our members say, we'll be the commission, we'll be the, we'll His Excellency, been assigned the cyber security and crime law. We we'll talk say this is going to be unlike other laws. In order for data share of the gather dust, we we'll therefore make sure say this lawyer will put that into practice. And we don't commit say we we'll continue to respect human rights, we we'll continue to respect fundamental freedoms of every citizens, but we we'll also go ensure say we we'll keep cyber hygiene, good cyber hygiene. Um law keep the peace safe and secure for other citizens and all one for use and for other purposes. Then. Well, and now, 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 me, the great, great pleasure for usher in my friend and colleague, um, Professor Dr. <laughs> Timothy, <laughs> Timothy, uh, Kaba. Timothy is not a professor, not a doctor. You know, but when I go listen to her, I mean, you know, like, uh, Chief Ghanifa, I mean, in Nigeria, they mean, they mean, they mean, they mean reject her, senior advocate of Nigeria, when at the ultimate times where all Nigerian legal practitioners they look for. They not been the government, they not been the game because it was quite a critic. So the, the people there been here and say senior advocate on masses, Sam. Yeah. So even when they been call up in, for let go, let them go give and finally the Sam, you know, they were in Sam close, the senior advocate of the masses. So he put the one on top. Anyway. So Timothy can't Timothy don't join me now. Uh, we we'll go straight to business. Straight to business. Mr. Um, Minister. Yes, welcome, welcome, Timothy. Yeah. Yes, um, so uh, I'm not even waiting to catch your breath. Mm -hmm. um, this would go to business streets. 
um, we we follow us then we listen us then very patient. Um, this program here, Boko people now are missing. So we we'll go straight to business. I want a great family and let tell them what you can do in other ministry. This so as um, minister of mines and mineral resources. And I already tell them say before you can do. Now you have been the CEO of the Petroleum Directorate, so you come highly recommended, you know, with experience now almost all parts of the group, the, 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 the globe. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister, and uh, it's a great privilege and opportunity for use this you very, very useful platform for speak to the people. And good evening to the listeners and those that are watching the videos and uh, the program all over the world. Let me make a disclaimer first. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, you refer to me as a professor, <laughs> as a doctor. And, also the uh, right and, and my brother John, John now will be sitting somewhere and, look, and listening to this. But John, let me, and, and then the rest of Sierra Leoneans, I don't have a PhD and I'm not a doctor and I'm neither am I a professor. But that's fine. That's how my brother banters <laughs> me. Always. Yes, um, I think the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources, not the uh, ministry will get the constitutional right through the minister for provide uh, management um, and, and leadership for the mines and mineral sector. Um, um, like you rightly said, the the mining sector is a mainstay of the economy of Sierra Leone. By that I mean uh, the very biggest, if you like, um, economic um, capital source for the economy. Uh, because uh, not only the mining sector they contribute to the treasury of the country, but the mining sector they also provide, um, you know, jobs for Sierra Leoneans. They also provide opportunity for Sierra Leonean businesses. Again, forward, backward, and side linkages where all they contribute to the development of the economy. So the responsibility as a ministry of provide leadership for. Uh, the mines and minerals there. Then we get with agency, one of the National Minerals Agency. The National Minerals Agency in function now, uh, to regulate and also inspectorate functions of the mines. And so we work together as a, as a sector, um, you know, um, as, as, as institution, two institutions of the sector for provide that leadership. Okay, so yeah, thank you for that, for that very brilliant oversight for you. Um, overview we don't give of the rules and responsibilities of the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources. So let's go straight to business. Um, we know say um, we inherit a mining sector, we've been there in serious crisis. Um, we've been to talk about obsolete laws then, we've been to talk about um, lack of trust in the sector, we've been to talk about corruption, we've been to talk about Boku 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 in any direction manifesto. We also over the period on talk say for more begin for mine diamonds, minerals now in the 1930s, better benefit not So you don't be minister for over two years in the sector now. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So what are you give um a little idea of then and now how you meet the sector or how we meet her in 2018 and how it did now. Mm -hmm. Just let listeners there and people that want to follow we understand that context. Yes, and, and, and I also want to take this opportunity for, you know, go back beyond 2018. Oh, please the, the far, you know, if, if, a, 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 a very, the lo very long history of Sierra Leone's mines and the mineral sector. Mm -hmm. You know, it was in Fittinga uh, in the 1930s when they invented the first diamond in Kono District. Mm -hmm. So now it is close to a century, over 90 years of uh, mining operations in this country. Notably, we've been mining diamonds, but also in the 1950s, they were mining chromite in Shibima, mm -hmm. and the time we get the rail system and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, in the 1970s, where SLST go, we had NDMC and the nationalization of uh, NDMC, of that particular the mining, uh, the diamond subsector of the mining industry, and, and, and also the collapse of the diamond industry when the war came uh, and, and, and then after the bailout of the President John Kabas government of Serrutile after the war and the EU money you wouldn't use for re 
res uh, re resuscitate that mine, and then to 2009, when the first Mines and Minerals Act was enacted by the then uh, President and his Bikromas government, and then the 2010, um, you know, uh, what we call windfall of the, the, the Fenway concession discovery, mm -hmm. and the African mineral bubble, and, and, and then the London mining bubble as well, then to Usaudi, so today. A lot of people can compare the mining sector of Botswana to that, to that of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. uh, in September, Blavatnik. in September, I've been taking a course now, uh, the Blavatnik uh, School of Government on uh, on uh, oil and gas and mining governance. And this was the highlight of the study, how Botswana as a nation landlock don't use in resources, just diamonds for take them people them from poverty to to a heavenly status whereas Sierra Leone that has you know almost half of its circumference if you like uh, being the Atlantic Ocean and also get diamond and other minerals if you look at them um, the, the difference here is one leadership when we can get the opportunity for right the wrongs or for set things right Boswana did in the 1970s when Boswana discovered diamonds and and so the leadership then is a celestial so karma. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it, the minerals were found in, in his own, own town. Mm -hmm. So what he did was to tell the people, his own traditional leaders. He said, "Look, minerals are spewed all throughout Botswana. Mm -hmm. This was this was not even the case geologically. Mm -hmm. But what he wanted to do was to vest the minerals in the state, mm -hmm. so it will it will it will prevent you know uh, you know the 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 usual way we." People then can own minerals and begin fetch each other, mm -hmm. and so by so doing, by telling these people that they went into uh, you know transferring the wealth, investing the wealth in the state, and so immediately they established funds like they get to what they call the debt stabilization fund, overseas investment funds, and all of those funds, and so when they establish those funds. When they get resources from the mines, then they put their resources into them different funds then, with high integrity. At the end of the day, some of them funds then they, especially the overseas investment fund, mm -hmm. now in the help considerably the annual budget. Take today then turnovers and they come into the budget. Then this debt stabilization fund, then in the use where they go take loan for service those loans with the debt stabilization. And they went ahead and they signed partnership agreement with the BS, which is one of the world's largest diamond uh, producers and, 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 and sellers of diamonds. And today, everywhere in the world where the bears get a business, Botswana as a country has over 5% in those shares. What did we do in the 1970s? When SLST, SLST closed, mm -hmm. we said, no, we nationalized. We took over 51% equity, mm -hmm. but then the capital contribution to the operations of the mine was to come from the private sector. Mm -hmm. So the mine not survived, especially where you had um, you know, unscrupulous leaders like Jamil Said and all of those. So the mining sector collapsed. And the other difference is because we, we diamonds have been largely alluvial. ADMC and SLST never went to Kimberlite operations. And because these diamonds have been alluvial, easily got in fact some of we are then not then sand sand in the bone we and we grew up. Our parents were doing, you know, with family they do their artisanal mining and all of that. So you find out say they, everybody in the country gets interest in our minerals directly. And so when the war came, it became very a lot easier for make the conflict reside relatively permanently in the areas that were mining midday. And, and so, um, you know, illegal mining, destruction of, of the environment, because these minerals have been accessible. Whereas in Botswana, these kimberlite mines are in the Kalahari Desert. So the ordinary man will not have access to underground kimberlite. Mm -hmm. So today, that is why, in fact, the diamonds that they produce in this country under kimberlite, it is almost unnoticeable because these large-scale mining companies that they left surface operations mm -hmm. then go underground. So a lot of people don't even know what is happening underground. A few days ago, I took my permanent secretary and team to Mayor. They're developing an underground kimberlite mine mm -hmm. in, in Kono District. Okay. When my permanent secretary first entered, it was like, this is a different world because it's capital intensive and all of that. So these are some of the basic uh, differences. Then, what thing happened after the war now, after the devastation? Fortunately for us, the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009 was enacted. Mm -hmm. But now, it is from 2009 to now, it's over a, dec a decade. 
So a lot of water don't pass under the bridge. New innovations, new laws. The world has now improved, uh, you know, into honest, into, 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 into premiering what do they call ESG, environmental social governance. Mm. The world is big on this environmental consciousness and all of that. And so that is why um, by the time the 2010 firmware discovery was made, they prognosticated the, the endowment, said $12.8 billion. What's in that program? What's in that program? <laughs> so, 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 okay. so what you do basically, mm. then try for calculate in geological terms. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, we get the, one of the largest deposits of iron ore in the world. Yeah, I, I walk there around. You walk there, yes. Mm -hmm. But we know the geological, mm -hmm. technical, financial, and social difficulties for anise, mm -hmm. that so-called 12.8 billion metric tons of iron ore. Yep. So when they come, a lot of money was brought into the country, and this money was taken to the mines, overemployment, over servicing and all of that. So yes, what looked like a boom was just like helium in a balloon. Mm -hmm. After two years of uh, Ebola, that could not survive. The bubble burst. The bubble burst. Equally so with the, the Lonsar uh, concession. So those went away. And so by the time the SLPP government even came, Shandong went up in the- Oh, sorry, sorry. No. <laughs> Now, be part of the reason that all they say would have been the fastest growing economy. Exactly, because um, don't forget, mm -hmm. billions of dollars then pour into the system. Mm -hmm. Whether that was directed towards developing the mine and producing the equivalent minerals and get profit was the case, we leave that to another judgment. But I definitely would tell you that was not the case. That money was liquid cash, it was going here and there. In fact, some tax prepayments were made. Yeah, so now all of a sudden now yes. also, when mm -hmm. you talk about the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009, mm -hmm. the royalties, mm -hmm. you know, and they, 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 that was such a bad deal. Mm -hmm. You talk about 2% royalty, not 2%? 3%. 3%. 3%. Mm -hmm. You talk about this small, small paltry figure. Mm -hmm. In fact, would they be, would they be front load? Mm. You know the taxes. The taxes. Yes, and what would they so, use for recurrent capital for recurrent activities? Not for in investment. Economy, not for economic and yes. So in a new direction, mm -hmm. we've been right that the manifesto say mm -hmm. we will review that one. Mm -hmm. One for no waiting done different now mm -hmm. from this very sad and dismal state of affairs. Mm -hmm. We've been on um, mm -hmm. all mining sector been all look like mm -hmm. one later farm and so that. Yes. So, so what do we do basically? First and foremost, like I said, Shandong did not go into administration by mm -hmm. 2017. Mm -hmm. So which means naturally they were unable to proceed with the development and production of the Tonkolili mine. Mm -hmm. So obviously the license was cancelled. Mm -hmm. And a lot of mines have not survived. Mm -hmm. And so came in SL mining. Mm -hmm. So the government of Sierra Leone then said, look, uh, some of these arrangements were not right, like the SL mining arrangement. Mm -hmm. We went to into we went to arbitration, but we came out very stout. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've got a precedent from that. Mm -hmm. The precedent is we came out with $1,020 million mm -hmm. um, as part of the benefit we'll get from resolving the matter. Mm -hmm. Then we also come with 10% FCI, free carry interest. You go for a telephone farm, but what's yes. that only? But free because, carry interest. Uh, for mm -hmm. all born, mm -hmm. we would have mining in sector and they collapse. Mm -hmm. We want to see who size saloon they get. If, if, it, if it not happened before, we we'll get free carry interest. Mm -hmm. Not put nothing for merely being owners, yes. You know, the benefits, yes. It looks like saying that you don't do this yes. under President Bill, no, take yes. food through this. Man. So, so the wisdom of the president, mm -hmm. where say low police matter in a court mm -hmm. in, in agreement with the, the conflicting party, they say, Okay, we negotiated, we said, You know what, we want now, we say we want forget percentage in this particular mine. Okay, we ended up getting 10 percent. So that 10 percent is undiluted. So every investment within the Marambam mine today, so the Leon government get 10%. We even get a director in the board of Marambam mines. Well we give we a voting right, you see, as a nation. Then also we come up, and like I said, with $20 million. So during this minerals boom, we have that kind of arrangement no, 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 of the no, no, mine now with us all? No, 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 no. Even, let me, let me tell you, um, with the Tonkulili mine, Mm -hmm. Yes, it provided jobs for people. And I was Provide, one of the yeah, you were one of the beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. And yes, I will tell you, um, there was a period when people were really happy with the level of employment. But I think the new direction approach is this. 
we want sustainability. And in order for we forget sustainability, we need for be reasonable enough for allow the mines then for operate independently without political dictate dictation, without uh, political interference. Because if we if like what happened in those years, and, for instance, and I start to I come to the HR and say, look. I'm the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources. Mm -hmm. That field contracting, I'm a brother for Guy. Mm -hmm. I'm the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources. I'm bringing 100 uh, party people then for employed then. You know what is going to happen? The mining company will feel pressurized. And what they will do is, they will take your folks. But when they take your folks, either they pay them very minimal, or they pay them and give them good money. The savings they them for make for the difficult days, they, they, they cannot make those savings. So when you get a small interruption, they're not able to survive the storm and then the collapse. And that was what happened in those years. So what we've been able to do is to depoliticize the mining operations of these mining companies, allow them to do what they need to do. And also significantly, you know, His Excellency the President uh, calls me for bill for review the Mines and Minerals Act. But in the New Direction Manifesto, yeah. President to the review of the Mines and Minerals Act and the enactment of policies. Because it is those policies that will inform the review of the Mines and Minerals Act. Mm -hmm. The policies will take into cognizance specialized concerns or areas of the mining sector together with other international uh, models and forget the best. So what do we do consistent with the New Direction Manifesto was to enact the first mining mineral policy in this country, the first geodata management policy, and the first artisanal mining policy. Mm -hmm. So with them policies here, and with the, 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 with them policies here, then with the African model mining, mm -hmm. with African mining, uh, model vision. mining vision, mm -hmm. and the ECOWAS protocol, we use the wire and other benchmark studies from Ghana, Botswana, and the like, for review the Mines and Minerals Act. Mm -hmm. You understand, sir? Okay. Uh, so with this now, we don't get, for instance, one percent community development fund mm -hmm. paid to the people, payable to all the areas that have signed community development agreement with large scale mining companies. Before now, uh -huh, nobody before now nobody signed community development agreement. But now, because it's required by law, we have caused engaged the mining companies for signing this agreement. Now we'll come to Tonkolili. Tonkolili, for instance, consistent with the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009, mm -hmm. then they put aside 0.01% for the people of Tonkolili. Mm -hmm. So what do we don't do now? And even that 0.01% they put for the people there, mm -hmm. from 2010 mm -hmm. to 2017, they never paid those monies to the people. Oh, really? Yes. This is new. They never paid those monies to the people. We are told that, in fact, we don't get communication with the should say Their money they did, they may put on one certain bank, but the bank up to now has not accounted for that money. Signatories to that account, except the permanent, uh, the paramount chief, Naim, he will speak to that. You understand? So now what is happening basically oh, is, no, with the review of the Mines and Minerals Act now, 1% of the gross export, Naim, they go to the community. Last year, His Excellency go pay, just for three months, 5.3 billion loans to the people of Tonkolili. Yes, I've been there. You, you witnessed yes, that, right? So in now, addition to in addition to that, so Marampa Mines, they're all from a paltry 0.1%, they're all now, they commit 1% to the communities. That's yeah. the then, yes. Then also, when the Mines and Minerals Act they get the presidential accent, all revenues that are that are that are that are that are generated from districts where the mines are situated, those district councils are going to have nothing less than twenty percent of the royalty paid paid from those mines. Is that not less than twenty percent will be replowed to those uh, districts where the mines are operating. And that besides, which we don't do back, we don't see any new mining company where they can draft who they get in in this country under the Mines and Minerals Development Act for commit 10% free carriage interest to the government wow. and the people of this country. So this is derived from our experience with the Marampa Mines situation. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Timothy, thank you, thank you. I mean, so in very short time, you don't lead real serious reforms under the sector. From 0.01%, you don't make a 1%. Mm -hmm. and absolute figures, not very serious thing. Mm -hmm. Adidi, who His Excellency, go present the chair, uh, Nathan Colley, at the, the Frank Bayadi. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know the community was ecstatic they said they don't want to see that one day mm -hmm. for seven for ten years then it will be from 20 20 <coughs> 20 20 to 2017 mm -hmm. that's seven years mm -hmm. and even the money we to keep nobody may will account for it. you know this is very sad well now that's <coughs> the polite way people then they go through we will also not hear you say under the leadership of this young man you know as part of the president's envision for make sure, say, um, Sierra Leone and mining communities and benefits would not begin get 10% free carried interest in all mining concessions that will come in our big one. So this way, we are getting a shoe in into their investments. In mm -hmm. So if it better now, now all will smile together, mm -hmm. you know. So I think so we'll get opportunity for get more shares, yeah, if we get one who can buy. That's correct. Not so. Mm -hmm. I mean it only takes a visionary leadership for do that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so far we'll learn, you know, this 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 day had gets very hot. Timotela we read some comments there. Mm -hmm. Um so um Al Imra Ibrahim says I love the program very much. Um um Kudu Scrubal say um a the well a, a very pleased. Uh, particularly way you did here today, Timothy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, okay, so somebody did bring this in a very legitimate concern. We will come to the next next time. Thank you very much, Mohamed Ahmed. Um, Harry, Koy, Harry King Koy, you are the best, no doubt. Thank you very much, Harry. With, with people like Timothy around, the people's minister, thank you for always bringing our favorite program. You are an additional blessing to the new direction. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, I had somebody mention your offer. Mohamed Ahmed, good to see you guys, especially Timothy. Very professional and intelligent, especially in extractive industry. So to your credit, sir. Keep it up. Good those guys, the people's servants. Uh, Mohamed Tennyson, can I say, Timothy, our honorable for the UK, are the best minister ever under the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources of the Republic of Sierra Leone. To your credit, um, they're talking about our humility. Thank you. Some of our members and their Tulungu patrons have made their most reckless bigotry decisions to deny all the money. Okay, thank you. We are not discussing that. Mm -hmm. Cheers. You know, Zakaria Jalo says, um, we are doing a fantastic job. Great talk on the sustainability. You just mentioned Honorable Minister. That is correct. That's you, sir. Marcellus Momo is talking. I think Marcellus is calling in from the US. Yeah, so from Winti <laughs> to Pujong to the US to Australia, mm -hmm. everybody is online. Mm -hmm. Yes. Abu Kamara says President Bill has gems in his cabinet. Some of these gems we have kept, you know, away from. <laughs> this program is people center. The people ask the Mines Minister and his hair. Kudos to Mr. Radu for listening to the people. Mm -hmm. So people are very excited mm -hmm. that you are here and you know we have quite a flurry of um, comments here. <coughs> So, yes, so um, we don't talk about um, Denton so. so we want to talk about the law, some of the key elements there that this Mines and Minerals Act with the Awit presidential accent now. Mm -hmm. What are some of the critical things that we did? We think say salon people there for no, particularly people there within the mining areas. Mm -hmm. I already like what you lay bare and clear, you know, the difference between the Botswana kind mining mm -hmm. and the Salon kind mining and how leadership, you know, at the very early stages of their discussion, mm -hmm. the big game changer mm -hmm. in the Botswana mm -hmm. and all your leadership sadly enough became a cause, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But again, under the new direction, we are here, we want to rebuild this sector back mm -hmm. brick by brick, layer by layer, mm -hmm. you know, infusing the best human resources and all. So talk, talk to me about the, some of the key things there. You, you see, um, the mining sector is perhaps one of the most complex sectors, um, you know, in government and in, in, in the economy, in that it's a distribution of uh, these potential and possibilities from one person to the other or amongst people. So it is very difficult, um, I must confess. Um, as mines minister, I can say it's it's not it's not an entire luxury because um, anytime you make a decision, somebody somewhere will squeeze sour grapes because they feel not satisfied with it. Even though most of the decisions we make, we do it in the best interest of the country and the people, calculatedly. So <clears throat> the Mines and Minerals Development Act. As you see now, we call our Mines and Minerals Development Act. Mm -hmm. It is very deliberate because we want to put our minerals 
central to the development of this country. We are very cognizant of the fact that these minerals are finite. Um, what does that mean? They're so they they don't, they they don't, they are, they are non-renewable. At some point in time, they finish. Mm -hmm. um, the estimated average life of a mine is 25 years. Mm -hmm. So even if you get um, you know, this big endowment and every year we the produce for them, you know, make the right decision for utilize the <coughs> for utilize the the benefit of them. <coughs> I'm sorry, Fambole. Mr. Minister, I will can please come also. You know, so if we not make use of um, the resources there now, prudently, the generation we will come, perhaps the noble meets, I mean, their resources here in, in abundant quantity, with them back for utilize for their development. That is why I will remove their resources now for make sure so we convert them into development and that development day, the generations yet on bond will come and meet them and build upon them. For this for their own livelihood so in this now to talk about sustainable use sustainable of, of use of resources okay. for development and that is why we named the mines and minerals act as the mines and minerals development act and what is contained in this act that is phenomenally you know a game changing um, a game changing um aspect of the mind of the act one like i don't state government is going to have 10 percent free carry mm -hmm. interest two 1% uh, community development fund mm -hmm. will be paid directly to the people. Mm -hmm. Two, you know, I, 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 I am not from a family that owns land, okay. but I believe land is life and it is one of the key factors of production. So land is very important. So when they take somebody in land, Nihan, for converting into mining operations, you have deprived those people of the ancestral connection to the land somehow, and you have also taken from them their economic livelihood. So you have to compensate those people by way of paying very good surface rent to them, so that then people in the will use the surface rent for alternative livelihood. What do we get in the old act? And this might look very small, but for me, very important. And personally, like I said, I'm not from a family that owns land, mm -hmm. you know, but are they, are they, are they sorry for landowners under the land tenure system where they prevail? Now, most of the areas also get mines up country. Mm -hmm. What section 34 of the Mines and Minerals Act say, when they pay surface rent, only 50% they go to the landowners. 15% they go to the chiefdom administration, which is administered by the, the chief, the paramount chief. Mm -hmm. Then another 10% or so, or so, or 20, 10% or so, they go to the paramount chief directly. Mm -hmm. Then another 10% they go to the constituency development fund, mm -hmm. which is administered by the member of parliament. Mm -hmm. Then another 10% they go to the district council. So you see, all the other <coughs> stakeholders and take half of the money that should be paid to the people who own their land, who have lost, who have yeah, lost yeah. their ancestral yes. connection to the land because of these activities. Mm -hmm. So what we've been able to do in consultation, inspired by the president in vision, because the president himself is a people's, is the people's president. Mm -hmm. So we came up with this thing, say, let us ameliorate, let's increase what the people get from their land so that they go able to use them for proper alternative livelihood. We say 75%, 70% for go directly to the landowners. So we'll put this 70% to the landowners. Okay. Chief Dom administration get 10%. The paramount chief get 15%. Now the constituency people then uh, sorry, paramount chief 10, chief Dom administration 10, then the 10% percent they go to the constituency development fund for the members of parliament. Not forgetting that they make it a lawyer. Yeah, you yeah. understand? But we take away the district council. Why we take away the district council? Mm. Because in this same mines and minerals development act, mm. we don't see it, I think section one. Uh, section 119 or so or section 94 we don't say the paramount chief uh, the 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 royalties we would get from the mine nothing less than 20 percent of that money should be replowed to the district where the mine is situated and so which means if we get royalty of 10 million dollars nothing less than 10 20 percent of 10 million dollars will be sent to the district council mm -hmm. as part for the development, for the development of the district. So even you get districts, 
you get places that would not get mining companies. Mm -hmm. But because mining companies, their activities are far reaching so so economic impact yes. if not physical and environmental yes, so sir. therefore you get to have everybody in that district benefiting from that mm -hmm. which is by way of using public infrastructure mm -hmm. by way of using good roads by way of getting access to places that are otherwise without mm -hmm. these resources not accessible mm -hmm. so this is what we call holistic development but also because the world has now moved from this masculine draconian way of administering the sector we have now Piggy, piggy banked on the global aspiration for what they call ESG, environmental social governance. You know, there's a new definition for capitalism. Capitalism without human face, what they call uh, capitalism without human face, in you know, order to survive in this competitive world. No. So, for now, accentuate the interest of women because we don't get reports. You know, there are civil society. No, and interest go before. Yes. In fact, you know, this is the vision of the president mm -hmm. with the gender empowerment bill and all of that. Mm -hmm. But we don't get reports the way they show say. Mm -hmm. um, there is militarization, mm -hmm. weaponization against women in mining enclaves. Mm -hmm. Discrimination, so they, they beat women in their minds, what they do in their businesses. In fact, the way that they get access to uh, to mining bush them, so suddenly they discrim discriminate against women there. Even mining companies then get this uh, age old philosophy say mining and the extractive sector is meant for men and not women. You know what? With this ESG, we are now making sure that mining companies, both at artisanal, small scale and large scale, consider women as very important component of the extractive sector. And that is why we have a whole chapter in the Mines and Minerals Development Act where they cause mining companies that for do what they call gender and vulnerable population audit. They call they do annual review of the environmental social impact. Mm -hmm. So every year when they get the Ministry of Gender and Children's Affairs, they go do audit on the mining companies for make sure say women are well represented at every level of the administration of the mines. Mm -hmm. That 30% for many make sure say in fact most of the mining companies now in anticipation Mm -hmm. of the implementation of this act most of the advert in the pool now then they prefer women the first forget them positioning geologists miners accountants and all of that this so is that is time, and, the best time to be a woman yes exactly, exactly never than never before e exactly because the, the only child i have is a daughter is ah, a daughter. Well, so, <laughs> so 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 definitely you know that's 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 why some of us are passionate because we know what in how I women know, can change society you know, I was brought up by a single my, single mother. The, the story, the story uh, is, 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 is almost, you know, it's almost so the same. This is to the mm. credit of, so um, you see, so what you know happen now, would they make sure she'll do gender audit? Then the other good thing is artisanal mining. Mm. Artisanal mining. Which one are the artisanal mining? That is, they already use that pickaxe and mm. shovel well, and sugar. Well, well, any well, any salon man can do. What will people they already do and then still they do that no abamara on all these streets and all of these places. Mm -hmm. But we don't see say over the years, the environment is destroyed. There's no proper regulation of the activities of these miners. Even when it is illegal and outlawed that they should not use machinery, then they use it illegally. And so, if I don't say, we own indigenous people then, because of the ban on machinery, mm -hmm. they're not able to get benefit from them. From but they don't, they don't get machinery. They don't get machinery. Yes. They're so now what this law has done is to encourage our local persons who are in fact the, the largest number of people that are employed in the mining sector are in the artisanal subsector. Mm -hmm. Over 300,000 of our compatriots. So what we're saying, we want to increase your revenue. We want to in, we want to formalize the sector by having these artisanal folks forming cooperatives, taking licenses, and using machinery under the guidance and supervision of the NMA and the EPA. So by so doing, they increase their production, employ more people, increase their revenue, and we protect the environment in a formal fashion. So this again, another good aspect of the mines and minerals. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so far more than another area, um, this one since we began that mining diamonds in the 1930s, no such reforms another ever day, no such progressive laws another ever come in place. Sierra so Leoneans now will get free carried interest in the big mining companies that will come in, will get 1% of the community, even the structure, of the distribution of what's in the coming, they ensure now say a benefit land owning families eh? because now the, now the major source of income or uh, revenue and all the ancestral and spiritual connections to the land now they disrupt, get disrupted or not give to mining companies. So, you know, this is a very rounded policy and we want to tell you plenty thank you 
uh, His Excellency, congratulations for that brave and very clairvoyant vision. You not only see for today, it is see for tomorrow and the years to come. Because the one for ensure, say, this business of mining diamonds or, or you know, um, extracting natural resources there, it conform to sustainable global standards there. Okay, so, um, Timothy, now we'll also talk about, uh, because before now, um, they know the grumble grumble too much about during the war years, then they talk about blood diamonds, mm -hmm. uh, they introduce the Kimberley certification process. Mm -hmm. So, will be the failed EITI exam. Yes. What's our day today as a country? How are we faring out? Tell Fambo the folks, what's in this process and how salon they do the, and what are the benefits of this for we? Yeah, yeah, you see, so that's why I say we growth as a sector, the reforms are holistic with a touch on every aspect of the governance of the sector. So uh, the extractive industry uh, uh, transparency initiative, an initiative we get over 50 countries that are endowed with minerals and oil and gas. And so because people don't see, say, like for instance, Sierra Leone, we had blood diamonds that fuel the conflict and we don't see in Africa how minerals um, you know, uh, fuel conflict. So the world say, okay, look, it, before we get conflict, we're going to look at the causes of the conflict. How these minerals and oil and gas are administered to ensure that the people get maximum benefit from the God-given resources. But because we get corporate corruption, who say companies that they come, then they come with false um, uh, shareholders, and they fleece the nation, and they take their money and focus sponsor terrorism, and all of that. So they say, look, let's be very transparent and accountable to the citizens then by providing that clear-cut accountability in the administration of the sector. So Sierra Leone became part of the EITI. The EITI, they cover how we transparent, how we they put information them out, how we they administer licenses, and how we they generally conduct ourselves in the mining sector in the interest of the country, the people, and the investors. And so um, we do a validation for 2021. And, you know, interestingly, Sierra Leone scored over 87% for the first time in the wow. EIT for transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. This, I think we championed the office of the vice president, and we, in fact, get a board member, one of the, uh, the minister yes, of state, yeah. in the office of the vice president, mm -hmm. uh, Madam Al Ghali, mm -hmm. um, and, and also the leadership of His Excellency the, uh, of the Honorable Vice President under the vision of the president. Then we, the sectors, Remember, I was in Petroleum Directorate as well. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Petroleum Directorate, we worked extensively on EITI, and the Petroleum Directorate continued for work on the EITI uh, standards. Then we said that the mining sector would not improve significantly. So all of these combined, now I don't give you the status where we don't score this 87 point something percent, but also in the Mines and Minerals Development Act. As one requirement, in fact, with this particular validation, not captured yet, mm. where I believe, say, in the next validation report, mm. we will climb over uh, 87%, is the aspect of beneficial ownership declaration in the mining sector. Mm -hmm. Because the mining sector is... What's not done there? What do you have beneficial ownership? Mm -hmm. If you are, like, we, we get a mining company, mm -hmm. the one that wouldn't get shares, mm -hmm. the beneficial owners of that particular mining company, mm -hmm. then the percentage they wouldn't get, neither the beneficial ownership. In the petroleum sector, the EITI standard is 5%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the best standard of EITI get. In the petroleum sector, mm -hmm. we don't we achieve 5% beneficial ownership. Anybody who gets share inside petroleum company in this country, I mean the upstream, not to the one there and downstream, the, yeah. Yeah, downstream, if we declare you 5%. So we don't get people like us, politically exposed people, forget shares in companies by way of disadvantaging competition and carrying you know, interests in companies there. In the mining sector, in the Mines and Minerals Development Act, we get a whole beneficial ownership chapter where they say every mining company where they operate in a salon for declare the minutest to 5% equity holders who for declared all the information. Well, if you get like maybe 4.5, 2, that is almost insignificant to 100% old, mm -hmm. but you must declare. And that is consistent with international best practice. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure, say, we not keep a veil over people we're not supposed to forget right inside mining countries. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Oh, mother, I just say, when I said they enjoyed the program, um, so as we do this, I uh, want for Lord continue for share the link, um, let the debate go, on. I mean, Lord just keep on civil, you know, this, this is a very, very, very progressive, uh, insightful conversation today. What's the most to talk? Anybody will listen now. We said the land, the get away with big takeaways. So, um, somebody, um, somebody now, they say, um, Marcel Asmomo say innovation is key to meeting sustainability goals. I do agree with you again, Honorable Minister. I'm really looking forward to the measures that agency will take. Thank you, Honorable, yeah, for bringing such a program. This is my first time joining the program. This is from the US. Yeah, Mohamed Tini says a very educational program. If I may ask, is there any protection for Sierra Leoneans in terms of employment in strategic positions and make sure they are not misused by foreigners? You may want to respond to that. Mr. Minister of Information, is it to my knowledge of mobile phone companies increasing? But that's a conversation I like to have. We might have another moment for it. General Yankuba said, great to see both of you. Question. What are the challenges you are facing in the ministry and what are you doing to remedy those, if any? Yeah, I am Kuba from the US. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so Sierra Leone has a concern we people they already follow we <laughs> about uh, in the new direction of manifesto we want to say for example we will ensure the qualified Sierra Leoneans and get opportunities for the for the if we are the topmost of mining companies. Mm -hmm. That one they happen now. If it happen, they also want for know if they're not a seize advantage for Sierra Leoneans. If it does, what will we do as government for protecting Sierra Leoneans and they? You know, for example, some kung fu fight they have to Nah, Frank Bayani. Everywhere. You want to tell me how it end up? What's going to be doing? We investigate and we, 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 we get for cause the repatriation of that person. Eh? What's not the repatriation? We we'll drive out, we'll out, out, out of the country. country. Yeah, we we'll out of the country. For we'll make sure, see, yes, this is Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone rights and privileges for the yeah. protected and, 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 and the investigation was instituted. Mm -hmm. And then we see, say, that be a great misunderstanding. Okay. A cultural misunderstanding. You know, those are uh, occupational hazards yeah. where, where it can happen. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and also uh, we did not want to um, forget about the conventions and treaties that we did to mm -hmm. for respect every citizen of another country in this country. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to be seen as being xenophobic, but also it's our responsibility to protect our people. So we make sure say, we put down the company and the person, the two people that them involved, they had a reconciliation and that person, because of the sensitivity, we ask them and go with the, take the person out of their company. And, and anytime we're going to the mines, mm. I can get special discussion with the Sierra Leoneans. Then. I can say at times, we have seen people starting from mayor, rust, rust about, mm. they become foremen, mm -hmm. they become all of these little, little uh, positions, then they end up become CEOs mm -hmm. of companies. You see, when you get qualification or when you get employment, what is important is your character. How you the day now that particular company day for see yourself rise. But let me give you an example. Today, in most of the major mining companies, you have Sierra Leoneans. Sierra Leoneans then wouldn't occupy important positions. Let's go to Sierra Rotai. Mm -hmm. The governance person is a female and it's a Sierra Leonean. Mm -hmm. You get other senior government, a senior rotai officers yeah, and, and also that them. are Sierra Leoneans. You get the lies, Osman lies and the barrenas, the barrena, the Barry owners and all of those. I mean, attack Kamara. You come to Barampa Mines. You get see. In fact, the governance person back is a female. You understand? Mm -hmm. the, you get you know then uh, top people, and we have representatives in the board. For instance, we government better representative. Ten percent free. With ten percent, yeah. yes. Permanent secretary back from the Ministry of Mines. Can sit on the board. Then when you go to Kingo, for instance, in Kingo. I mean, get from the stand, say there is this cultural clash often mm -hmm. between Asiatic companies and 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 we we used to Western uh, yeah. para Western lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, but we did, we the transition is almost getting seamless, and these people are fitting in very well. We even get the manager, one of the top managers for Kingo, when we own brother uh, Sila, mm -hmm. he, you know, uh, yeah, uh, Sila, yeah, Sila. Yeah. Sila is also a top manager of Kingo, the head of the, 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 the corporate affairs and mm -hmm. community affairs, Madame Judith Kose is a woman, you understand? They go back to places like FG Gold, there's a gay woman, they own a Sierra Leoneans, they wouldn't did it. So it's a move, it's a, it's a progressive thing, and would they continue for really mainstream Sierra Leoneans in, inside the mining sector, especially mm -hmm. women. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.
Timothy, so uh, uh, I understand say, following that training, we're going to get for prescribed mandatory cultural sensitivity training. That's correct. So that we they bring Chinese and other people from other parts of the world mm -hmm. and you know, you induct it into the Saralinian culture. That's correct. Similarly, the Saralinian and Zelle and also you know, also, you know, cultures are different. We're going yeah, to understand that's it. That's correct. So I think it's a good thing now they want to inject it. Thank you very much. Um, do you have a lot of continue for interact on this business? Um, so Abu Kamara say, uh, this program meant for ministers or the entire MDs. Abu will just start this program. We're not going to host everybody together, but if we get to, we want to host everybody else, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can, we can able to share more information. But as the days go by, I think so we'll increase the frequency. We're not going to do once per week, you know, time permitting. Omar Lola say, thanks guys. This is the only means we can get information from the ministers. Thanks and keep the ball rolling. Desmond Duarte, Desmond Men, Desmond Medina, the Mines. You know, so men they stand up for Sarah Lini and then they call up, then they, then they call her, um, they been getting your own crew name, Mr. Ben getting your country name. <laughs> yes, Mr. Minister. Okay, now you, this one day for, uh, it's good to listen to Desmond. He, he's an old hand. Uh, Mr. Minister, are you considering or considering getting mining companies to make commitments towards transitioning to renewable energy in their operations? You know, yes, uh, you can't do that. Okay, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. There's one, thank you very much. Yes, um, Abu Kamara say thanks to President Bill for supporting the Minister of Mines to do such remarkable reforms. Yeah, okay, thank you. Somebody say, uh, you're, you're being say, modest, you're being modest. That well, makes... have to be. No, but the, the more important thing is say I'm enjoying this conversation. Please ask the Minister of Mines if an artisanal miner picks a big dam, what will be his percentage share with the government? I think so then. In, this is a very insightful conversation. Very much so. Very Tell me some so. respond back to Desmond, to Abu. And uh, let's others. start with Abu. Mm -hmm. If an artisanal miner picks a big diamond, mm -hmm. what will be his percentage share with the government? An artisanal miner that is licensed, mm -hmm. if you pick a diamond and get a diamond, you know what you pay? Mm -hmm. uh, wait, except if you don't pass 100 carat, mm -hmm. carat, then there is an arrangement for that. Mm -hmm. But when he picked that demo, say they 50, 70 correct, mm -hmm. he just they pay the normal tax where they pay to government mm -hmm. because the person being licensed for getting win. Okay. Yeah. So now when the, the, the diamond is found in an unlicensed area, mm -hmm. that is when it becomes the property of the state. Okay. And then the additional mine the 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 find the person where they find the diamond will get compensation from the state. But I come to uh, Oga Desmond, mm -hmm. and I'm happy you said uh, Desmond is an old man. Yeah, and that's very. He works well. for he, he and I worked mm -hmm. in two mines. Old vibe uh, mine. Mm -hmm. Yes, we worked in um, um, in Frankway together. In London mine. We came back and worked in London mine yes. together. So renewable energy. I mean, the energy transition. It's not a question of whether someone is willing to transition or not. Because I tell you what, part of the ESG, some financial institutions will soon stop to support mining companies that are operating on fossil fuel, right? And so therefore, um, mining companies they are just now for go renewable mm -hmm. because the renewable and green mining is very much attractive to the financial institutions as they are now configured to, 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 to go through the, trans the energy transition. So if I don't say most mining companies are now, then they try to find ways how for for get uh, the to get to solar mm -hmm. for the mindset. As I talk to you, Marampa Mines, they talk with Serengeti mm -hmm. for able to get a solar farm where they will cut down on the cost on fuel. We did a very volatile fossil fuel world today with the Ukraine Russian crisis, with the with the new vernacular of criminalizing fossil fuel. So everybody is adjusting to make sure mm -hmm. that in the long run they are not caught in the fossil fuel shortage of fossil fuel sabotage so they, it is in the good interest of the mining companies as it is government concern for the environment to go green okay i think said there's more um um seeing me peer may not be seeing me peer you know be martin luther king you know <laughs> within the mines you know stood up for sarah union workers even a great person and discomfort you know so now that even they call it like like yeah so we've been on the power your revolution for a long time yeah. so just just last week uh, uh i go uh i've been there at a ceremony <laughs> with mm -hmm. afrisel in the commission what is it called clean energy they said they do mm -hmm. the energy transition mm -hmm. from fossil fuels to to renewable mm -hmm. you know just for the same reasons so yeah. mm -hmm. i understand uh orange is doing same um 
QSL is doing same. Mm -hmm. So this is upon us. Mm -hmm. You either do it or you, you or, wait it, or you vanish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so Desmond say the minister is absolutely right about ESG and artisanal small scale mining. Well done, sir. So the non stamp you, bruh. Desmond the non tina my friend George Owell. You know, George is um you know George I, I appreciate say you get the courage for Kanaya. Um there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. I mean, you not you not contest any of the facts there, eh? but if they say we're not for the other one by now, there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. We'll be known to engage on other platforms, on other media, right? So if we do it now, I don't think anything wrong with that. But if you do the right thing for win votes, what's wrong with that? Look at the kind of huge transformation that happened at the mining, the mining, the mining sector. All the ministers, you know, can I, when I know the transitions that already happened, the transformations, the progress. So do we have a possible progress for make votes in Abati? Now wrong thing for do for get votes? No, but, 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 but Mr. Oil has to know that the people will only vote for you when you do well. And so we have to inform the people about what we've done. And somehow the people didn't feel them. So I don't think um, it's, it's his opinion and uh, I wish him well. Okay, so now we now talk about other things. Um, I know say recently we get some bill going to parliament. Mm -hmm. No, 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 cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, some paper, some cabinet paper mm -hmm. um, for the management of ports and rail. Mm -hmm. Services, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that one is some interesting thing. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I want to talk about what we do now for attract other mining giants uh, in the sector. Then we come to oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Yes, oil and gas. We spend some time. In it. Okay. Yes, because now <coughs> when you see when you have a competitive environment, an environment where predictable, mm -hmm. an environment where Get, uh, we get the rule of law, mm -hmm. an environment where we get citizens we ready for development, an environment where we get a leadership, a progressive leadership, where they protect not only the interest of investors but also the interest of the people. Mm -hmm. Then you're able to attract the right companies to come to the country. Yeah. Don't forget we had. We had courted for ourselves a reputation that was not benign enough for attract mining investment. Mm -hmm. So the past four years, the leadership of His Excellency has been to midwife this reputation of ours, to sanitize the mining sector and make it a good standard for, West, for the sub-region. And this is exactly where we are getting to. And um, for local mining companies in Fukantik, for instance, the Valunia concession, mm -hmm. uh, na, na mm -hmm. Remember Baumaun for over 40 years, the discussion of Baumaun having industrial uh, deposit of that, of gold, Benonde, on artisanal mining and all of that. Cloth gold came. Mm -hmm. in, yeah, remember in, yes, remember cloth gold. Mm -hmm. And when cloth gold came, they failed. Uh, Amara came, they failed. And you know what? The mining license was converted in 2014 to exploration license oh, with God. less commitment, with absolutely less commitment, with less benefit to the people. It was difficult to take that concession legally and give it to a competent company. Where could we have gotten that competent company? But because of the reforms, we got FG Gold coming. And as to you, FG Gold has spent over $50 million for doing drilling, for doing development, and now, what we call jock certified, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, the estimated deposit of gold in that particular Valonia concession mm -hmm. is to the tune of about 3.2 million houses of gold. The infrastructure is being, is being constructed, massive mobilization is coming up, and so we, we, you see the, the companies that before they even begin put one drill bit on the ground, mm -hmm. they build a massive learning institution, school, they renovate and build extra um, health facilities for the community and they don't give scholarship, dozens of scholarships to people when they come up from Valonia Chipper because they want to prepare the community for meet the benefits where they come at the place. And we're in discussions right now with the company for see how we can even go into a prepayment arrangement for develop the road where they come from Bo for Gunama to Toka for oh, open the country diagonally. So you see, so for 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 continue for reform the sector with a with a very progressive 
and Competitive Mines and Minerals Development Act with a strengthening Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources and the National Minerals Agency, NRA, and EPA. Collectively, we were able to make the mining sector once more a gold standard of the sub-region. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Timothy. Mm -hmm. This is a really great one. Um, I, I, I follow that, that, that concession day mm -hmm. and it's trouble. Now, this is the lead me to my other question. Over the years, we see company in Ghana then get license, then spend 15, 10 or so years, they say that they do exploration. Mm -hmm. But during that period, whatever they do, government not the benefit from it. Now exploration license and get. So I mean see you wanna do some airborne geophysical survey studies. Waiting around the one little family, waiting around the and waiting waiting at the benefits what this country will stand for get. What inspire wanna for do that as a government? You know, for let you negotiate you have to be well informed for they negotiate very, very, you know, for they, you win from a negotiation. You never know what you get. And <clears throat> exploration and the process forget basic information and peculiar information will for lead to making a technical decision for mine, for going to mining. Because it is capital intensive and it, of course, requires technology, it is always but very important that you get sufficient data with for inform your mining operation. So this country, we been all rely on what the British man have been all left with me, where these were surveys conducted back in the 1930s, 40s. Manual surveys. Manual surveys. And most of these documents are dog aired and cannot be even there. And some of them are, are not presently legible, you know. And so, um, what do we do? as a government, through the support of the World Bank, is to conduct a nationwide geophysical survey. What is geophysics? Our geophysics world. is like running an x-ray. Mm -hmm. If you run an x-ray on somebody, you notice, say, okay, there's a tumor here, there's this here, but then you get for go now into internal medicine, for able to determine what in that pos the possibility of what that could be, and then you make diagnosis, and if not operation, you do operation. So geophysics, now, the first stage of exploration, I mean, put it this way, you run the x-ray. So we got what in the toxin are one of the best way non conducting African continent. Blame them, can we see where His Excellency inaugurated them in February I mean, they, 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 2019. Mm -hmm. They run all over the country at 50 meters above a sea level and at interspace of about 150 meters. They flash all over this country. That data is now out, but it's a highly technical data. Contrary to the thought of people that everybody can go have access to that data, no say they are gold, they are diamond, they are gold. That's, 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 that's the way. The that's, the, that's, that's, that's the thinking of a man of, the man of straw, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, <laughs> te <laughs> but, te but technically, technically, it is not like that. You know, so, about it. Yes, so what you know happen? But what you know help you for do? Mm -hmm. We were in at the sector. We now know say Sierra Leone is far more endowed with mineral resources than we ever could imagine. Wow. Yes, because for instance, iron ore, which is a ferrous substance and it's magnetic in nature, mm -hmm. wouldn't pass what you can call uh, electromagnetism mm -hmm. through this survey. Mm -hmm. We see, you know, reactions in, like the Fenway concession, mm -hmm. in far more than what you need. Yes, wow. like the Kimberlite uh, uh, dikes and pipes that we we'll get. Mm -hmm. Of course, sometimes the characteristic then can behave like hard, intrusive, igneous rock, we have volcanic rock where they solidify underneath. But the survey, this geophysical survey that I put for show say, we may have more pipes and dikes on the ground kimberlite than those already established from the previous studies of the British. Yeah. Mm. And also the geophysical show we say we get platinum metals in at this Freetown Peninsula. They are here. They are endowed. You understand with platinum important minerals then and also it don't show we say no we we'll begin digging or heal no no but we're not get that money there right now for do that okay so then they then they will, will left and to demand and supply okay yeah and also in consideration of our environment mm -hmm. so it don't really show see these countries in doubt yeah mm -hmm. so now but this not obviate the traditional exploration having boots on the ground you understand? Mm -hmm. So this, it's not the, 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 the end things. to the means, yeah. It's just the means to that end, yeah. So therefore, the geophysics we don't get a, a day open to public. It is licensed for a fee. And so with, with the mining companies, they don't begin camp, they don't begin licensing. 
and they look at the geophysics and they use the geophysics for input into the system there and go to the field and reduce or abbreviate what they call the exploration time. But what is good? So it's not the main. So if they can't spend five years for exploration, so then now the geophysics, it mm. now it now it now reduce your risk mm. and focus on um, and on what we call uh, target points. Okay. So instead of you go you go and dig dig all side, you now have target point where you focus your study by. Then you know what in the mind some minerals development app don't do again. No, no, no. Because like we say, mm. uh, because of asymmetry of information, mm. with people that they always come and say, hey, but mining company don't care, say exploration don't take 10 years, 9 years, they ain't showing nothing and don't make this stuff. Indeed, most people can come in the guise of exploration license mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and begin mine. Well, that's what Government they benefit to people and they benefit. Mm -hmm. So what we have done, Today, I had a very fantastic meeting with my agency, the entire management of the NMA, mm. with the brainstorm on the way forward in 2023. How to make the mining sector better than uh, how it was in 2022. You know, we put moratorium on exploration licenses. Okay, fantastic. So, so we they consider for lift this moratorium mm. on and begin issue exploration license, but in a well, um, in a well controlled manner. Mm -hmm. and, and in, in such a way that it will bring benefit to the country mm -hmm. and reduce expiration period. So now what we don't do, in the New Mines and Minerals Development Act, mm -hmm. we don't, with the New Mines and Minerals Development Act, mm -hmm. we don't ensure, say, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, we don't ensure now, say, uh, mining, the, the, the old one, that be nine years, mm -hmm. Nine oh, years exploration. Mm -hmm. nine, day, nine years, nine years sit on the concession. Wow. Then you can get up to 250 square kilometer as an exploration license. You know what we don't do? No. We have now reduced it from 250 mm -hmm. to 175 mm -hmm. square kilometer. Okay. And then we don't also so so we don't also reduce the time mm -hmm. from nine years to seven years. Okay. Because what we don't do happen, you take a force for four years. Mm -hmm. After you don't take them for four, uh, for, I think you take them for four years, they get uh, all things for yeah, you can stagger them for mm -hmm. nine years, yeah, yeah. But then now, what we don't do, we don't reduce them to seven years, okay. Do you know what we do back? No, for the exploration will, will be meaningful no. so that any Jack and Jill, no, we just can't no more pay mm -hmm. under the old law, mm -hmm. one acre. Mining uh, exploration comes in the pay on hundred dollar per acre. What you know what we don't do now? No, you know this not become law. So mm. I don't want to. I don't want for comment uh, commit any contempt. Okay. But actually, because we know the issue now, mm. I can free for talking. We don't plan technically. We don't look. We don't do comparative studies that Ghana and elsewhere. We say, look, let's don't entertain people that do not have verifiable financial capacity. Fly by night. Fly by night. Mm. Let's say exploration license now. Is five hundred dollars, for instance, mm -hmm. for for one acre, mm -hmm. and so if the five hundred dollars for acre, mm -hmm. you want to do exploration, and you and I'm going to direct mining, you know, definitely will not take more than one hundred seventy-five thousand square kilometers. Mm -hmm. One hundred seventy-five uh, square kilometers. You know what acre? Because the price will mm -hmm. So you go only focus on the area where you want, mm -hmm. and you cannot keep on paying five hundred thousand dollars per acre. Uh, five hundred dollars, sorry, per acre for seven years. You know, they find nothing. Now you still go relinquish the concession. Mm -hmm. So we will do that. We will raise the entry barrier and ensure that competent people can take these exploration licenses and push up. But the $500 has not become law yet. Mm -hmm. It's just a thinking because I don't do comparative studies around. Mm -hmm. And we believe, say, by the time we leave the ban, we will get competent companies and we'll get the right people there for bring me more geological information and increase the mining companies in the country. Yeah, a particular like um, this airborne geophysical survey where you mm -hmm. talk about, mm -hmm. um, you don't indicate, so we say, it now put we in the driving seat mm -hmm. in negotiating for natural resources, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. Because, I mean, we now get information at our hands. Mm -hmm. Information is power. Mm -hmm. We'll get our day, now we know what's in the, mm -hmm. what we'll get, and that kind of thing. I think so that's very, very transformative. Mm -hmm. That's quite progressive. One hotel on a thinking. So somebody concerned about um, land degradation. Jerry Yakuba said, mining is an inherently invasive process that mm -hmm. can cause damage to a landscape in an area much larger than the mining site itself. The effects of this damage can continue years after a mine has shut down. What safety measures will you put in place to cushion these effects to protect the citizens when a mine is shut down? So let's go. Uh, I'll read more. But we are while we are this, we'll now continue for share. Let the debates go on. 
I mean, this is a really, really, really interesting conversation today. I know say mining, okay, everywhere they say the mining, the, the, the mineral as a whole gets able to look after this country. So that's what we're discussing today. It's true. A really, really, really good law listener. Uh, particularly like the, um, the, the contextual comparison between Botswana and Salo, mm -hmm. you know, with endowments there, the leadership team there, the <laughs> governance mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. And that one they really set up, set up in context. Abaka Karon say, Minister of Mines, you are very correct in the area of geophysics exercise because I was part of the landing and taking it off of that. They were engaged in that exercise at the Lungi Airport when I was an air traffic controller. Every part of this country was covered and that was expected result. Trust the process. Abu Kamara say, Okay, uh, Abu Kamara say, Honorable Minister of Mission, please will be very happy if you bring the Minister of Lands on your next program. Abu, thank you very much for your abiding interest in the Minister of Lands, but he was here very recently mm -hmm. and people liked the program. He was very frank and he was roundly commended by all who they were listening to him. <coughs> the Bleed newspaper say, very educative and interactive. Thanks to the Minister of Information and Communications for giving us such an opportunity. Thank you very much, my brother. Ibrahim Jakemasi, very interactive. Today we have learned a lot. Indeed, the New Minds and Mirrors Act is the people's center. The, it's, it's people center. This protects the interests of the people. Thank you, Honorable Minister, uh, for bringing the minister closer to the people. Okay, so this is very important. Marcellus Momosi, if not done, Mr. Minister, please look into the skills gap due to technological advances in the world. Thank you both for the front, fantastic job and contributions you are doing in our beloved country. Yeah. So, Timothy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Do you all not forget to for share a lot of the share mm -hmm. to family, to yes. friends, now groups there. Mm -hmm. Let this debate go. I mean, this is about Sierra Leone, the only country we all call ours. So, let the debate go as long as now within limits, reasonable limits, constructive <coughs> and let within decorum. Yeah, the next course here. When I submit the other side, they go course. I really please see if people they hold divergent views, not the course now. Mm -hmm. The wrong place to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I think, yes, um, the, the, the mining sector, it's mm -hmm. a moving progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the leadership of His Excellency, the President, it will help we greatly for move um, the sector. Yeah. When you, you, you take, for instance, um, the, the contribution of the mining sector to the economy, mm -hmm. most times we focus on what goes to the Treasury. But again, the mining sector is one of the largest contributors to the NASIT scheme, PAYE, mm -hmm. for instance. Yeah? Yeah. And also, this other social benefit of the mining sector, such as the construction of schools, the building of health centers, community centers, scholarships, re, re, you know, uh, redoing, regrading, then they, then they do roads, and all of these things are direct contributions to the mining sector. And, and, and you see, leadership is very important, uh, Honorable. I think one of the things that we, we, one of the things that we, His Excellency, don't make very clear is that we get for go at all cost. We get for go at all cost for make sure, see, we run the mining sector for the benefit of the people. It can be very difficult at times for meander around, uh, some of the difficult decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes that's all what leadership is about. Mm -hmm. Make some God called decisions, mm -hmm. no matter how difficult they are, but in the end up for benefit, they make the, the greater good. Mm -hmm. That was what we did with the Kingo situation. That was what we did with the FG Gold situation. That was what we did with the uh, Maramba situation. That was what we did with the Mayor situation. That was what we did with the Wongon situation. That was what we did with the Seret situation. So we'll also say, through the difficulties, and this is not the only country where through COVID-19 difficulties, the mining sector still survived because we made some prudent tax deferment. We also make sure, say, we, we, we work with the mining companies then for transition through the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we're healthy. Some people also can compare Guinea to Sierra Leone. Yeah? yeah because I got one something there. Uh, Desmond, um, Desmond Martin Luther say, 
Great idea, but $500 is on the high side. I mm. work on different projects around the world, and Guinea has become an attractive investment point for mining and a king competitor for Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Probably you don't have to talk about that Guinea and Sierra Leone. Yes, yes, so I, I like this one's uh, contribution. Yeah, Guinea, Guinea, them, they don't reform over the year, the years, and in terms of certain minerals, for instance, iron ore. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, perhaps we have more endowment of iron ore than Guinea. Mm -hmm. But the Simandu concession is a world-class concession. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And also when it comes to bauxite. So why are they not going to go to Guinea? Well, be, be, because mm -hmm. the Guinea concession, you need little beneficiation. Okay. Yes, there are, for instance, in the Tonkolini concession, you they put in situ, mm -hmm. which means the original DSO, mm -hmm. they contain about 57 to 58% ferrous uh, uh, iron content, which means when you sell them out of the country, you go, you have to pay environmental fees for all the beneficiation. China go for take all of them here, and so you know they fetch much. But if you produce the same quantity from Semando, mm -hmm. where the iron content in original state is around uh, 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 62 or 60, mm -hmm. so it put less cost on the exporter, okay. and then it fetch more money. Mm -hmm. Then also, Guinea has larger quantity. Of certain minerals and they then you know we are a more stable democracy and and so therefore we get policies and laws mm -hmm. in some context because mining sector itself is a very complex sector mm -hmm. nobody nobody in this world wants taxes yeah mm -hmm. nobody wants taxes and because we are a tax-based economy and if I don't say even though we make the mining sector attractive through um, the the enabling legislation. Legislation, legislation like the IR extractive industry revenue and, and that's that. part of the problem. Yes. <laughs> so 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 if I don't say hmm, companies who want to go to a less regulated environment, mm -hmm. you know, when you over regulate and over legislate, investment tends to shy away from your environment and it goes to a less regulated environment. Mm -hmm. But what is the predictability and stability in this less regulated environment? Sustainability. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the instability in Guinea. Then they go, but then there is political instability. So it, it gives hesitation and confidence to investment. And that's why up to date, Semando has not been fully, um, you know, uh, produced from. My brother talked about the license fee. 500. Uh, uh, 500. Yeah. The habit in Sierra Leone is people saddle on these concessions and they don't pay. You understand, sir? Mm -hmm. And in Guinea, for instance, also gold export. Over the period of the crisis, and it is true, Guinea exports more gold than Sierra Leone. Liberia exports more gold than Sierra Leone. You know, there were there were times where Gambia, mm -hmm. the Gambia, they export more than Salo. When the Gambia, they export more than Gambia, they export more than You understand? No mine. Because of the minerals, the, the diamonds would have been smuggled out of Sierra Leone, and they go to Gambia. The Gambia became an exporter of diamonds. Mm -hmm. Guinea equally, most of the mine that all we get at the sub and at the, at the country, like gold for instance, mm -hmm. they are situated on the frontier axis of the country. That is situated really? close to Guinea and Liberia. Liberia. Mm -hmm. We don't try as a sub region for harmonized taxes on export of these precious minerals. But Guinea, is in the habit of going their own way. And when they go their own way, because then they benefit from young gold where they come on at this place, then they export and make almost zero tax on export. But they get all that means then, wouldn't they get money in lieu of then taxes there on export of gold? So for instance, Guinea is about zero, 0 0.5 to 0 percent on export of gold, whereas in Sierra Leone, for small scale mining at 3 percent, and for those who are on Export license is 3%. For large-scale mining companies, it's 5%. So that's problematic. <coughs> so therefore, the people who they produce, because the small-scale miners and the artisanal miners, and they produce the largest quantity of gold. So what do they do? Then they go Guinea and Liberia, who the taxes and it as very minimal, and export. But then we get presidential uh, instruction for review that. But unfortunately, this year, we will not get uh, financial uh, I don't call it the finance, finance, act. finance act. Otherwise, if we don't put on last year, we the hope say maybe mid this year we'll get finance act. We don't look into the tax. When the president would in second term. In second term. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. We will get now that finance act day and we incorporate this tax reduction for be competitive with Guinea. Mm -hmm. But what you, again would you look at now how for add value to the precious minerals when you left this country. Mm -hmm. Because what Guinea does 
and some other countries do is they have stamping system and smelting uh, facility for smelt all the, the rough gold with the dust gold where they come out of this country. When they smelt them, they get this certified stamp. When they give you stamp, you're paying for this stamp. And the, the legislation is you must have a stamped gold bar for Komo Guinea before you go out of the country. So by so doing, Guinea they get money and the gold with the Komo Guinea they be legitimate. So that's we're also working on that line. And that's why there's a we're trying to develop uh, the Precious Mineral Trading Act, mm -hmm. right? Because with that act, we will now guide me on how to administer the export of precious mineral, whether it is true value addition and stamping. But I tell you what, we have the support of His Excellency the President and many stakeholders were related to the mining sector. And we're, like I said, it's a work in progress. We are open to more ideas and that is why any legislation we come up with, we they get nationwide consultation and i plan it for this program because from the comment they want to read there are some ideas that are valid mm -hmm. that myself gave a helicopter from here mm -hmm. i go to my office mm -hmm. and discuss with the people there and make them become a good policy or good contribution for improve the mining sector okay so thank you thank you uh timothy time they almost one catch we mm -hmm. um i want for call on family for let us continue for share let this debate continue even after the program now end um let we continue for Get um, this thing shared now. We popular forum there now, groups there to family, to friends, to loved ones there because this discussion is exclusively a Sierra Leonean discussion. You know, how all will contribute for making this country I go before, right? And with the progress report of His Excellency, the President, um, in stewardship in the mines and mineral sector, as seen through Timothy Kaba, who now all long see he's a young man with a large heart. Uh, he's led very frame breaking reforms that this sector, um, we, um, from what we discovered diamonds in the 1930s, they're not able to do it. So, I'm um, really good, you know. Um, <laughs> Mohamed Masako is a good program. Thank you, Mohamed. I suspect that's from the US. Yes. <laughs> I have seen it. <laughs> yeah. So, Abraham, uh, Abraham Jackie Masi. Um, Honorable Minister, um, Honorable Minister of Mines, can you please shed light on corporate social responsibility of the mines, the mining companies in Sierra Leone? The new mines and minerals have to look into that area. Did we look into it? Mm. So, so Frederick is concerned that the opposition uh, is silent. Well, the opposition, when they say they talk true for the most part, the one they were reasonable, the mature and very educated one there, we don't get experience in the insects, so yeah, they know they, they know they talk. Because I mean, the truth, you know, that's our name, not truth. So, uh, the Namik and the Philam for my young friend, um, and George Owell, um, and you know, but I understand. I mean, you're not a brave person still, you know, even though you know they, they say anything wrong. Um, but the real opposition guys and the leaders there, and our colleagues and our contemporaries there, we all don't go through many things together. They know, say, this report card with the Guinea ain't contestable. So they're not going to can't say anything about that. Yes, yeah, so talk to me about corporate social responsibility. If we okay. get provisions for under the new act. Yeah, you know, corporate social responsibility we then can call citizenship philanthropy. Ah, not, okay. not to a legal requirement. Mm -hmm. A moral Respons responsibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um all when they don't fulfill all the legal requirements then, it is in their good faith, it is uh, in their good but great interest for provide tangible corporate social responsibility. Because what we do, central government, is to give them the legal license to operate. The land belongs to the people, the minerals belong to the state. So for you, for get stability, get peace and quietness for operate in a given environment, you must earn the social license from the people. Mm -hmm. And therefore it calls for a very tangible corporate social responsibility that would delight the people and make the people part of your mining operation and development. But yes, indeed, uh, corporate social responsibility don't increase considerably. More schools have been built by mining companies, even in my hometown. And in fact, that's why all... What are your hometown? Uh, Sierra Leone. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's Togo Fields. Togo Fields. Oh, my okay. chipped up. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and Kono District, if you like. So in these places, all the mining communities and get what they call community development, 
committees. Mm. So we don't strengthen them community development committees here with a diversity of membership where they enable the prudent and judicious use of mining revenues for needs felt development by the communities there. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, you believe, say, a mining company called Cerite, even, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. before they don't begin, even, they don't, even before they produce diamonds, they build $1.2 million school in the middle of nowhere in Guama Medici Dome in Tongay. Fantastic level structures with computers and everything. Yeah, how about the this? Of yeah. They not only stopped there, they invested over $3 million in developing aquaponics, fishing for support the people there. So they, 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 they you know, solarize many operations, schools, that then place the day of the countries and they operate. You go, I just, last week, I just come up, 2021, we inaugurated the, the uh, chief Thomas Sakui Hall, mm -hmm. na, na Kwakwema, mm -hmm. by PC uh, Pongaba Sakui the fourth. He built this with mining funds. Just the 6th of January, we go back for open what I would call a state-of-the-art market, Natankoro Chiefdom, and also open the South Randolph Philly Farboy a Hall Entertainment Center. So you find out, say, the overarching uh, uh, development of the president is being imitated by community leaders using mining resources. Okay. Everywhere in the, in the country today, mining companies are expanding corporate social responsibilities to the satisfaction of the people. The new direction is infectious. The progress is infectious. Yes. We see the president lead by example. You wait in a small corner, you don't have an option. Somebody may say, we'll get, we'll get time. We'll just come on our office, we'll continue. Because yeah. I've seen this president, people will travel abroad. And they walk till morning. Mm -hmm. So when I'm much younger, put them away down, delegate to. So, even if you know I'm go, yeah. you for shame. Mm -hmm. You for able to do it. And this is a privilege. Mm -hmm. Seven point eight million Saralinians, the lot fall of we, not only are the most brilliant, yeah. but it's a call to service, That's to correct. national service. That's very correct. We have to do our best. Mm -hmm. Um so Larry, the last set of messages that we go round up. Mm -hmm. Um Desmond Doati say, you know the best minister of minds, more to be done do, keep it up, sir. Not an easy sector to handle. He's been there, he's got to sit there yeah. for long. Um Abdul Bangali say, I didn't know this man was so grounded in this in his field. Well, there, you know, um, Timothy um, is a very, very brilliant young man. You know, I mean, this is this is a, um, being very modest in that appraisal. But I mean, it's from the bottom of my heart. No platitudes on this okay. So, Timothy, you are for roundup. Um, yes. Yes, like you are for roundup. I mean, time don't catch you. Right, yeah. spend the Thank you time. so very much. But the conversation will be so interesting, yes, we'll never stop yes, up. Yes, yes. So, now for roundup now. Thank you. Um, the viewers, they said, one of the follow we, we want to tell you plenty. Thank you. Mm. Uh, and a lot of continue for share. Um, this is incredibly interesting. Mm -hmm. So, next time we'll bring one other minister, we'll now for say. So, if we're not going to prefer the minister, we'll now for bringing air, for ask and bear twisting questions then, and for really get. You know, insightful interactions there. Eh, when I when I go when I go put under the post, we will bring that person there. You see, the good thing is, mm. I don't learn a lot from you today as well. Mm. You're a knowledgeable man, and incidentally, you worked in the mines, mm. and so um, I, I've always enjoyed discussing the mining sector with you. Thank so you. I want to thank you for those side benefits where they extract from your uh, atlas of experience. And I want to thank the listeners and viewers of this program. And I believe, say, it is also our civic responsibility for keep the population apprised with what we do, for make sure, say, the population understand um, what we do, uh, while we take, um, you know, uh, salaries for which the people are paying. So I, I think uh, we owe these people this, uh, this particular um, information here. Yeah. And thank you, Mr. Minister. And I want to thank His Excellency the President for giving us the opportunity to serve our nation at this very critical time. Uh, at the time when I was parachuted into, uh, parachuted down to the mining sector, <laughs> it was one of the most chaotic times. Yes, yes. But yes. I am a man who relies greatly on God Almighty. I believe wisdom, strength, and courage come from God. Absolutely. Um, I believe the many critics of mine who at that time said I was too young. Yes, I'm not. But, but they did not understand where I was coming from. 
with humility, with the atlas of experience that I had in oil and gas sector and other uh, related experiences, I, I, I raised up my hands to God. I said, like Joshua, Lord, lead me with this sector so I can make the best out for my people. And I want to thank His Excellency and the people for bestowing that in us and we will continue to improve and work for the sake of the people. No, so I want to do it. Sorry, I've been saying with the clothes. I want to play rub more passage. Quick, quick, quick. Mm -hmm. You know, the oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember say in about 1983, mm -hmm. we take a first shot at that one day. Mm -hmm. There are about 20, 2003 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. We we'll continue then under the previous administration, but mm -hmm. some efforts have been made. Just tell Fabu there, what's we'll how they will do? with the oil and gas. Because uh, when they say Salunga oil with mm, Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll speak to up to 2020 uh, when I was director general. I know the petroleum directorate under the leadership of uh, an astute director general. They don't they pick up from Musa stop, then they push. I, I don't know where uh, they are right now with it. But the the um the 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 truth of the matter is oil and gas exploration production uh, development and production is a function of supply and demand mm -hmm. for oil and gas mm -hmm. and when the economic crisis came in 2000 and, uh, 2007 8 and 9 mm -hmm. there was so much need for more uh, oil and gas reserve in the world and new frontiers and so um the middle east the Became very unpredictable with the Iraqi war, the Afghan war, the insurrections in most of these Gulf countries, and all of that. So the war looked at Africa mm -hmm. as the potential powerhouse of fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. So they came in, and it coincided with the Jubilee discovery in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. And so what happened? Then mine, uh, oil and gas companies then came with billions of dollars to West Africa. I was one of those. Um, engineers that was involved in the West African oil and gas endeavor. He said, "Call it you was working." I could. <laughs> I worked in Sierra Leone between 2012 and 2013 as well site drilling engineer for Luke Oil Oil and Gas Company. We expended 136 million dollars. We discovered oil in Sierra Leone. Before that, in 2012, Anadako and 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 and, and Talu had come to Sierra Leone. They also made some minimal discoveries. Well, this effort in the West African Basin was thwarted, uh, scuttled, or thwarted if you like, when oil and gas prices start, started mm -hmm. to plummet in yeah. 2014. Mm -hmm. To the extent that by the time I finished the licensing round of 2000, the fourth licensing round of the Petroleum Directorate in 2020, oil prices had gone below zero dollar per barrel. Yeah, it, and then came COVID-19. So everything went bad. But where we are today, there's demand. What's our day today? We get demand for oil and gas. What's that demand for oil? Demand. We see the Russian conflict on makes Russia said they, they it all reduced on on the 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 the, the, yeah. what, the, the oil really they put out there mm -hmm. for the people to buy and sell. And that's why today we see as part of the the forex disturbances that we we'll get, we also get even the availability of the product. Okay, so you, you, you talk that? about part of the dollar challenge. You yes, get. we get the availability of the product. Because in those days, you get merchants the way they apply all over the water, where they can and can sell. But now, all, most of these people cannot even leave the Black Sea to come down to Africa to sell their, their products there. So there's real demand for petroleum, uh, for uh, crude oil right now. But where we are as a basin in West Africa, because of the water depth of our environment, it requires some huge capital mm -hmm. for, for, for produce the oil a day. When I was well side drilling engineer, we I had a sample, a jar of oil from Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. right? And concentrated gas, which we flew down with to Yaroslav in Russia and tested. Mm -hmm. It showed Sierra Leone has got a fantastic sweet oil. But the problem is mm -hmm. the logistical constraints, infrastructure for develop arm um, into a producing nation. So what did happen now? As demand the soil more interest will be generated as other traditional fields in the debate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, uh, more interest will be generated for Canada. But you know what's going happen now? With this energy transition conversation, oh, yeah, they don't yeah. the pattern now the behavior of oil and gas companies for go for less risk, less risky projects. Mm -hmm. But I'm very hopeful 
that when demand go to a level, we will be lucky, like Liberia, Guinea, and Cote d'Ivoire. We will see the sort of investment we will come pull oil and change the economy of a country. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. um, Fambul Len. Mm -hmm. We now already round up. Mm -hmm. um, you don't demonstrate fantastic depth and breadth mm -hmm. uh, in the subject area where the president asks you for leader. Mm -hmm. And I'm so very proud of you. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, the listeners and some of the following, you have heard that they've expressed mm -hmm. it every inch of the way. Mm -hmm. Fambul Len, wanna thank you, thank you. It's been really great hanging out with you. Let the debate continue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? No, what else?